God will never invest new inventory to a man who has never searched his own. Why would I give you more of what I already gave you that you ignored? Why invest more into a person that's never searched their own inventory? He starts you out with an inventory of everything you need. But if all I do is look at what you are, never, never answer the question, who am I? What is the sum total? What do you get when you get me? Who am I in my character? Who am I in my personality? Who am I in my identity? Who am I in my gift? Who am I? What do I project to the world? If I can't answer this question, why would he invest more into me when I ignore what he already gave me, rivaling at what you have? That's a critical question. Like I started at, who am I? I, I can't be an occupation because if I meet me when the world meets me, I'm lost forever. So I can't start with what I do. I need to know who I am. First question people always ask, so what do you do for a living? Most people don't do what they love or like for a living. <laughs> it can't, that can't be what defines me. If you ask somebody who is Michael Jordan, everybody says what? A basketball player. That space of his life has, has been gone for over 20 years. So if all he is is a basketball player, what happens for the rest of his life? How does he define himself? For the players who play five years, six years, who are you outside of that window of time when there's more years ahead of you than behind you? Who am I? This is a critical question. And we find that every, every major kingdom person in the Bible, I find that same question, it pops up. Jesus asked him in Matthew 16, starting in verse 13, at a, at a place called Caesarea Philippi, crazy way he asked it. He says, who does man say that I am? He doesn't ask it to get information about himself. He asks it to figure out, does the people around me recognize my true identity? Because you're a reflection of me too. Well, some say you, some, some people compare you and say you just like Jeremiah. Some people compare you and say you just like Elijah. Ah, but who do you say I am? And he waits until he hears the echo of what he already knows about himself. You are the Christ, you got it right. But what if he reduced himself to, maybe I am like Elijah. Maybe I am like Isaiah. Maybe I am like one of the prophets. What if he connected himself to somebody else that was great instead of knowing when I hear from you what I already know about myself, then I agree. People inform you. Let me, let me say it differently. People cannot inform you of who you are. All they can do is echo who you are. You can't tell me who I am. You can echo, man, you pretty, thanks. All right, moving right along. Everybody got that one, who am I? Who am I? It's important because the struggle of it sometimes is we, we get stuck in between seasons of our lives trying to figure out who, who am I in this season of my life? This is what I am. This is, this is what I needed to be then, but this is what I have to be now. That's a frustrating part. I've gone through it. All right, let's, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give it to you like this. Because I like to use scripture because because it unifies the room, right? So in Genesis chapter 17, verse number five, we see the name change of, from Abram to Abraham. It says in verse number five of Genesis chapter 17, verse five, it says, no longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. You got that? So for 25 years, He's got a promise over his life about you're going to be balling out of control. You're going to have a whole lot of family. Your legacy going to be great. Everywhere you go, you bless. Everywhere you go, you take over. Like, yo, you, you, everywhere you go, your everybody's going to know your name. They're going to want your autograph. In essence, I'm bringing it to modern day. But for 25 years, he's got none of that. The frustration of Abraham is he is literally trying to walk out the process from Abram to Abraham. But he's aware of what he's supposed to be, but he's struggling with who he is. So for 25 years, he's eavesdropping on his future. He is literally eavesdropping what everything that God promised him don't belong to Abram, it belongs to Abraham. There are things that he promised every one of us in this room that you literally got to go ham to get it. There is a whole nother mindset that it takes to occupy the space of where you'll be at next and what you'll do next. You can have it, you can have the next level, but you can't be married and single at the same time. <laughs> you, 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 can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't date your future and date your past at the same time. 
You can't be committed to where you are and committed to the future. Something's got to, you got to give up something. There has to be at a certain point a decision that is made that you throw yourself completely at the next season of your life.